Hello friends, so welcome to our channel. So in the previous session we have seen the compile time polymorphism that is overloading concept. So there we have seen the constructor overloading and the function overloading. So in today's session we will go with the runtime polymorphism. Right. Runtime polymorphism. It is also called as overriding. So this is a overriding concept. So it is so it is implemented with the help of inheritance concept. using the inheritance. Inheritance means both the derived class and base class. See. Base class and derived class. So we know that we know that so in order to access the functions of a functions of a class so first we have to create an object for that class and through the objects itself we have to access the functions. Coming to this inheritance concept, by creating an object for the derived class, through the object of derived class we can access the methods and variables of derived class and base class. So here there will be a function and here also there will be a function. Right? And here the same function is overridden here. So the function, if you want to override the function which is written in a base class, that can be done in derived class. So the same function is implemented in different way in derived class. So this is called overriding. Both are same, but the logic will be different. Right? So through this object, we can access this function. Here, the return type should be same function name should be same number of arguments or parameters should be same data type of arguments should be same so here everything should be same so whatever the function we are writing in the base class the same thing we will write in the derived class that means the function which is, which has been written in base class is overrided by the derived class. Right? So, return type, function name, number of arguments, as well as the data type of arguments. Everything should be same. So, for, that's why we call uh, this runtime polymorphism should be implemented using the inheritance concept so without inheritance we can't achieve the overriding method of overriding but in coming to the compile time polymorphism so there is no uh, uh, no chance of using this inheritance concept directly we can achieve the compile time polymorphism by implementing the overloading constructor overloading or the function overloading right. so see just we take uh, the previous example so class, so base, we will write the function, so void, add, int a comma b, c in a, sorry, c 
सीन ए सीन बी सी आउट ए प्लस बी सो आई राइटिंग द डेरो क्लास क्लास डेराइव सो आई एम आई हैव टू अचीव द इनहेरिटेंस सो आई हैव टू यूज द कॉलम कॉलम वी हैव टू गिव द पब्लिक स्पेसिफायर and the base class and here i am again writing this void add float a comma b scene a scene b c out a plus b c now in the main function so we have to create an object so i am creating the object for derived derived d d dot add so here the problem arises here d dot add here d is an object for derived class so through the object of derived class we can access the methods of both base class and derived class so if you are using this d dot add the compiler doesn't know whether to execute this function or this function but this overriding concept based upon this overriding concept so here the both the functions are same right both the functions are same in terms of name in terms of return type in terms of number of arguments in terms of types of argument data types of arguments so everything is same so it treats compiler will treat this function which is written in derived class is a overrided method of a method written in base class so derived class is overriding the method of a base class so automatically this process will be executed this function will be executed and if you want to execute this one just create an object for base class so b dot add then automatically Through the object of base class, we can't access the methods or functions of a derived class, right? So that's why b dot add means directly this function will be executed, but not this. So hope you understood this one. This is called a method overriding, right? A slight difference between the method overloading and method overriding. So compile time polymorphism and the runtime polymorphism. So here everything should be same: the return type, the function name. the number of parameters the data type of each and every parameter should be same so then only the compiler will treat it as a overriding method which is written in base class right so hope you understood this runtime polymorphism and if you are having any doubts don't worry so we'll execute the program demonstrating this runtime polymorphism so let's move on to the compiler hello friends so in the previous session we have seen uh, the overloading concept which is also called as compile time polymorphism so in today's session just now we have seen the runtime polymorphism that is uh, the method overriding so we will execute a program for method overriding yes so first we will see we will include the header files so i was stream dot h for both the input and output c outs and then we'll include uh, conio dot h for clear screen now we'll write one class so here overriding concept includes this inheritance concept so if you are trying to execute the same method in the base uh, sorry data derived class then it is called the overriding so whatever the method we are writing in the base class that should be overrided in the child class this concept we we studied as a uh, runtime polymorphism that is overlo overriding method overriding so now we'll see so class base we'll write both base class and derived class so we'll just uh, we have to uh, uh, use the uh, access specifiers now we'll write a uh, void display the only one function we'll write a small function so just we'll display one thing so this is here we can write base class method 
right now we'll uh, so just to close the class we'll create a one more class class derived so in that also we have to write only one function so here we have to override the function which is written in base class so i am again overriding this one cc out so i am writing my logic in derived class i am changing the logic so derived class method so i am just writing only one thing so you can write uh, we can write the logic you can change the logic here itself now we have to write the main function void main sorry here we have not achieved any inheritance so colon we have to write public base so the inheritance is accepted now we can create an object for derived so that through that derived object we can access the methods of both the base class and derived class now first we'll go with the clear screen next we can see derived d it's an object for derived class so you can call d dot display so here question is so with the help of d d is an object derived for uh, uh, object of a derived class so with the object of derived class we can access the variables methods of a both base and derived class but here we are having the same function name for both base and derived class so we are having the display in derived class and the same display function in base class so this implies so derived class in the derived class we can override the function which is written in the base class so now if you are accessing the method by using the derived class then this derived class function itself will will, will be executed not the base class function see i will show you that override dot cpp let us execute this one right let's see you can observe here derived class method is printed here i am giving only d dot display so it is executing this function but not this function because this function is overrided in the derived class and if you want to access this one we have to create an object for base class and through the base class we can access the method because with the object of base class we can't access the all methods of derived class right so we dot display now you can observe see sorry if you execute this one now the both will be displayed but first derived class method will be displayed and then base class method will be displayed right so hope you understood this one right so in the concept of inheritance if both the base if the derived class wants to override the function which is written in the base class that concept is called method overriding this is also called as runtime polymorphism right so which is a one of the oops concept so in the previous sessions we have seen the inheritance concept and now we have seen this polymorphism right so these two videos the overloading and overriding so here see coming to the overloading concept the parameters the number of parameters may be different the type of parameters may be different right but the uh, the return type and everything can also be different right the return type may also be different coming to the overloading but coming to the overriding the return type should be same the number of parameters should be same the type of parameters should be same everything should be same so whatever the function we are writing in the base class the same function with the same return type with the same number of parameters we have to write in derived class but we can change the logic so whatever the logic we are writing in the base class that can be changed with the derived class or uh, in in the in the derived class right so that's the only difference so this is called a runtime polymorphism and overloading concept is called a compile time polymorphism right so hope you understood this one 
so only one thing should be remembered the function should be same in overriding the function may not be same except the name it can be in overloading right so hope guys you understood this uh, concept so if you are having any doubts regarding this overriding concept feel free to post your doubts in the comment section so that definitely i will try to clarify all your doubts and if you really understood my sessions like my sessions share my sessions with your friends and don't forget to subscribe to our channel thanks for watching thank you very much